What's up guys, it's Jay back again with Tech Everything. There's a lot of discussion about how much RAM you actually need for your computer. Well, if you're doing video editing, like I do a lot of times, it can be an important question to have answered before you build your system. So today I'm gonna to do a comparison of eight, 16, and 32 gigs of RAM for Adobe rendering. The processor I'm using is the i7-6700, as well as an MSI H170 board. I will be using two kits of RAM to do the testing, a 16 gig kit from EVGA, as well as a 32 gig kit from Corsair. Now, I know they're different kits of RAM. This is just a general guide of what you can expect. They are clocked at the same, 2133, and the timings are the same, so there shouldn't be much variance in terms of performance. First up, I rendered a 10 second outro clip in After Effects. I know you're thinking 10 seconds, that's super short, but this clip actually has three 1080p video files in it. It has overlays, uh, effects, color correction, all that good stuff. So it really taxes the RAM. Now it's also important to note that I have disabled the disk cache. I've cleaned it out and disabled it. So this is all RAM rendering as we go forward. Taking a look at the results for the After Effects render test, you will see that coming at no surprise, the 32 gigs did way better than the 16 and 8 gig. The 8 gig coming in a distant last with 727 for the 4K clip test. That's a 10 second clip. That is forever. The 16 gigs test was not bad. Uh, it's about three times as slow as the 32 gig test. But keep in mind, you can drop all of these times dramatically by using GPU acceleration or a cache disk or both. Next up, we're going to slide over to Premiere Pro, where I will render my Intel 600p review again. That is a four minute and 40 second clip with a standard amount of color overlays, transitions, and the kind of workload you may see from Premiere Pro. Now moving on to the Premiere Pro render test, the clip I used was not as demanding as the one we used for After Effects. It is a little longer though, four minutes and 40 seconds, as I said earlier, and you will see that the times reflect the same results we got from the After Effects test with 32 weeks coming out on top, uh, not by as much, and the difference between 16 and 8 gigs was not as much either in the Premiere Pro test for 4K or 1080p. So still you're seeing really long times for the 8 gigs of RAM and decent times fairly close for 16 and 32. So as you see, RAM does make a difference in rendering times. No surprise there. Keep in mind that you can increase the speed and performance of all these tests by enabling GPU acceleration and using a cache disk. I have a 120 gigabyte uh, Samsung 840 Evo that I use for a cache disk that knocks these render times down. So you should definitely look into getting a cache disk, especially if you have a small amount of RAM. If you're one of those people sitting there trying to render on eight gigs of RAM, as you saw in the test results, that's not really an ideal situation, but a cache disk can help you significantly. If you're gonna be doing serious, serious rendering, especially in 4K, you really wanna get at least 16 gigs. Now, 16 was acceptable, the times were fine, they were okay, but 32, I thought was a sweet spot in terms of price to performance. Uh, you can really, really fill up a lot more RAM and have more RAM per core on your processor. So I thought that the performance was really excellent when you get to 32 gigs. So thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. I'll drop links below for the article on the website if you wanna learn a little bit more. As always, I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything. I'll see you next time.